Hello, I'm Captain Zack, and I'd like to welcome you to the 94th I Don't Work Your Lady series. Bonus cool points if you guess what that intro is based off of, and I'll give you a hint, it was requested in the comments. So, whoever requested that, eh, there you go. Also, if you want more from me, go ahead and check out Daily Dose of Reddit. We just hit 10,000 subscribers, so go ahead, make that, like, 15, maybe. I don't know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, well, that escalated quickly. So, I recently learned of this sub through r slash and storytime on YouTube, and a recent dog adoption post made me want to share my hellish experience from last week. So, a bit of backstory. I'm a veteran who suffers from major depression and PTSD. Because of this, my psychiatrist, psychologist, I don't know, I get them confused, the therapy one, not the medicine one, psychologist, suggested getting a service animal, and she'd write a letter to make it an emotional support animal until it was certified. Luckily, a friend of my mom's was giving away three Great Pyrenees Catahoula mixed puppies, which was perfect for me as I herd and haul cattle for work. And both breeds are herding dogs and very intelligent, happy, and lovable, so she'd be able to help me at work and with my PTSD. The characters are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll mention that Sadie is my pup, the goodest, clumsiest pup that ever pupped. Normally, my company lets me bring Sadie with me, and she'll ride in my truck or hang out in the shop with our mechanic's dog. But my girlfriend usually spends Friday through Sunday at my place, and Sadie latched onto my girlfriend immediately when they met, and they were both cuddled up asleep and looked way too cute to wake up. So, I left Sadie with her for the day, knowing she won't mind as she has a Great Dane and loves big puppies. After work, I called my girlfriend to let her know I was heading home. She said she was taking care of the horses. Yes, she's a horse girl, but not that kind. And she had Sadie with her, but she was just finishing up. Knowing that neither of us would want to get out again after getting home, I asked her if she wanted to meet me at the pet store to grab a service dog and training vest, because trying to train her in public is pretty hard, as everyone, very understandably, goes crazy for her on sight and has to pet her, and I figured that this vest would at least deter the sane crowd. So, fast forward to us in a large chain pet store. There's only like two, so 50-50 chance you think of it immediately. Letting her choose a few toys, and finally coming up on the collars and harnesses section we've been looking for. Cue me fitting her for different harnesses, leashes, and yes, Christmas sweaters as well. I'm starting to put up everything I had pulled out while joking with my girlfriend when I get a hard tap on my shoulder by someone with very long nails. I turn to see what I instinctively know is a very entitled woman. She was mid to late 40s, long bleach blonde hair and a ponytail, jeans that may have fit 20 years ago, although in her defense she wasn't overweight, but the jeans were just way too tight and a button-down western shirt, thankfully with an undershirt just in case the poor buttons lost their never-ending battle with her obviously artificially altered bust line. Now, this is the type of woman I refer to as a Texan soccer mom, but for this story, I'll just call her Karen. Karen, as soon as I start turning, It's about time! I've been waiting here for at least five minutes while you attempt to flirt with this poor woman. Now, girlfriend hates confrontation and avoids it at all costs, but me, <laughs> well, I see it as a way to joke, annoy, or just let my inner butthole shine through, phrasing. Girlfriend knows this, and as we share a look, she rolls her eyes at my smile and walks off with the pup to browse the next aisle. Karen annoyed again. Really? You're just gonna ignore me? I'm sorry about that, ma'am. What do you need? Honestly, she was already annoying me with her rudeness, but that's no reason to be a butthole. Yet. I need to know where the something is. I wasn't really paying attention at this point, already deciding her to have a laugh, sending her on a wild goose chase. Oh, sure thing, ma'am. Okay, go to the end of this aisle, down three, make a left, then a right at the next, and it'll be at the top, uh, halfway down or something like that, I don't remember, as I was just saying random things. With that, Karen takes off on her quest to find her magic somethings, and I walk to meet up with my girlfriend, who was now in line for the one open register in the store. 
not complaining. It was moving fast, just setting the scene. Wow, that was fast. Me, a bit proud and with a big smile. Oh, she just needed to know where something was. Girlfriend, knowing me well enough to not believe I'd help someone that was being that rude. Really? That's it? Did you help her? Yep, uh, I was a bit rude back though. Karen immediately after, almost cutting into my sentence with who I assume is the manager. That's him right there, and he's still harassing this poor woman too. I want him fired right now. He gave me wrong directions to the aisles that don't even exist just to get rid of me to flirt with this poor woman more. My girlfriend, who was visibly annoyed with me. What? Giving her wrong directions is a type of rude. Now, Karen coming up with the manager just made me smile more, which of course annoyed my girlfriend more, but I couldn't help it. This was too funny. Store manager says to Karen, Ma'am, I've never seen him before. He doesn't work here. And to my girlfriend, Ma'am, is this man bothering you? Yes, but no more than usual. With a big smile on her face, thinking that she was funny. Then why do you smell like an animal? Ma'am, that's obviously a cow smell. We don't sell cattle. Karen, giving up on the manager and turning to me. You don't work here. Why didn't you just tell me? Why didn't you just ask? That is no excuse not to tell me. I would have taken a lot less time. Yeah, but it wouldn't be as fun. Hopefully next time you speak to a worker or a stranger, he won't be so rude. Karen, screeching a little at this point. Where do you work? I'll call the manager there to complain about you. And she even admitted that you usually bother her, so I'll tell him about your stalking too. Okay, at this point, we were next in line, and I didn't have any plans on staying to argue, but what she just said made me laugh right in front of her. <laughs> Lady, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but let me tell you some things. One, I don't, nor have I ever worked customer service. My boss couldn't care less that I was a butthole to some menopausal old woman. Two, don't be rude to people. No matter their job, they deserve respect. And three, what is your obsession with me flirting with my girlfriend? I got news for you. Even if I was single, I wouldn't be flirting with you. But I'd be happy to help you find someone more age appropriate. You're what, 55? Yes, I know, it was a bit of a low blow since she was obviously sensitive about her age. But at this point, she had made it personal and I was mad that she'd accused me of stalking when she didn't even know my name. My girlfriend was doing her best to ignore us and pay so we could leave. And luckily, after I said this, she had her receipt in hand and we turned to leave. Karen, eyes wide and mouth agape, of course started screaming profanities once she saw us start to leave. She followed us out to the parking lot, basket and all, with the manager following her, since she hadn't paid for anything yet. My girlfriend was starting to visibly shake. She really doesn't handle confrontation well, so I got her in the car and then loaded the bags in the trunk. The entire time, Karen was screaming, mostly incoherently, following me around the car while blocking me from backing out by putting her basket behind my car. At this point, a few things happened at once. First, I got in the driver's seat and started to swing my door shut. Second, Karen tried to stop me from closing the door by grabbing it. Third, she fails to stop the door and it closes. Her hand was still on it. Fourth, she screams like a rabbit being attacked by a ferret. Long story. Fifth, I opened the door so she could get her hand out. She immediately yanks it away and then did the one thing that I never expected. After getting her hand crushed in the door, this idiot tries to stop me from closing the door. Again, with her knee this time. What the flippity doo She's definitely got determination, I'll give her that. Of course, it didn't really close all the way this time, but I was mad and slammed it so it closed hard and fast and was probably still pretty painful. Now I'm laughing again, not at her getting hurt, but because as I looked back to tell the manager she may need help back to the store, I saw him already halfway back to the store with her basket. <laughs> The entire situation was just so unbelievably absurd. At this point, my girlfriend was crying and holding Sadie really tight. So I shut my door, made sure no body parts were in it this time, and backed out. Careful not to run over Karen. Although, admittedly, at this point, it'd be a lie to say I wasn't tempted. 
It's been a week now, and while I expected to get summons of a letter from a lawyer or something, nothing has happened, and that's fine because I don't think you can get in trouble for hurting someone while they try to restrain you from leaving. I should also say that no, I don't particularly feel bad about anything that happened to Karen, but I feel horrible for putting my girlfriend in this situation and apologized at least a hundred times this week. We're good, but I gotta be on my best behavior in public for a while. Dang, calm down there, Kiryu. Bashing people's skulls in with uh, car doors, I see. <laughs> in case you don't get that, in the amazing, amazing video game series called Yakuza, uh, one of the main protagonists, uh, Kiryu Kazuma, or Kazuma Kiryu, depending on where you're from, well, he has this special move where he can, like, if you're near a car and you have an enemy in your hands, you can, like, basically hurt them very badly with the car door. Um, honestly, I'd say that you kill them, but in that game, you don't really kill people. Even though you literally stab people with stuff, but you beat them up and they just get up and walk away. It's funny. Moral of the story, this guy, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Yakuza games, also very cool, and I recommend them if you like good writing, good acting, a good story, fun gameplay. Oh, they're so fun, man. It might take you a minute to, like, really hook you in, but, like, for me, for every single game, I get to, like, chapter 5-ish, and then a switch is flipped, and I'm, like, super into it, and I can't stop playing for days. This story's called An Innocent Case Turned Creepy. Hey, so first time posting here, and this literally happened to me today, and I thought it was just too weird to not post. A little background. As my name suggests, I live in a decently sized Midwestern metro, and I am gay and happily married at that. With all of the stresses of the holidays now behind me, I decided that today was the perfect chance to treat myself to a particularly popular area of the city and shop around a bit. I bought myself a scarf at one store and coffee elsewhere. These details are important. So upon leaving the coffee shop, I realized that I had inadvertently stumbled into a situation. I had to use a bathroom, but the coffee shop was, predictably, building up a rather long queue. Being the crafty fellow I am, I reasoned, rather than wait here with a full coffee and a bag in my hand, I'll start heading over toward my car on the other end of the shopping area and pop into Barnes & Nobles on the way and use their facilities. Maybe even look at a book while I'm there, because I know I don't need it, but I'm a hoarder with disposable income and I am my own worst enemy, so that's what I did. Upon entering the bathroom, several things had become very apparent to me. 1. I was not alone as both stalls were taken. 2. The counter was wet because of course it was. And 3. While I could set the coffee cup down and it wouldn't be hurt by the accumulation of liquids on said counter, I was also carrying a small paper bag which, as we all know, isn't known for its water repellent properties. Just as I was working out how to operate the urinal while simultaneously holding the bag in a way that wouldn't result in an unfortunate accident, I heard the man in the handicap stall exit. I didn't really acknowledge him and simply entered, leaving my cup on the counter and taking my bag in with me. It should be noted that I had one earbud in this entire time, leaving only one ear free while the other ear was jamming out to Sondheim. While I'm in the stall, listening to a Randy maid singing about maybe settling down but not really, I hear a man shouting loudly in the bathroom. I paid him no mind, thinking his friend was in the other stall. I was wrong. Before I knew it, he was hitting the door of my own stall, which was the moment I knew that the person he was shouting to was me. Oh, the honor. I replied with a resoundingly confident, huh? As I made out what he was saying was something along the lines of, thank you for cleaning up in there. It was at this point I realized the floor was a mess with toilet paper. Upon my exit of the bathroom stall, still baffled but seeing where this was most likely going, I look at this man in his late 20s, early 30s, give him a look that could only say, I'm a very socially awkward human and I have no idea what you're going on about. And it immediately hits him. I am not who he thinks I am. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The man proceeds to sputter. I thought you were here to clean the stall. I mistook the bag in your hand as a spray bottle out of the corner of my eye. I smiled, assured the man I was not an employee there, never have been, and never will be, thinking that was that. A cute little r slash I don't work your lady story, 
until it was made creepy. He took my hand and shook it, which is, I believe, a normal human social interaction in and of itself. But then he leaned in and swiftly, with expert precision, kissed my cheek. I stood there, stunned. I'm not used to romantic interaction in a general sense, being married and all, but even less so publicly and by a perfect stranger. At this point, I think it registered on my face that I was baffled, as I then heard him mumble something about loving the gay community before he nipped out of the bathroom, never to be seen again. Funny thing is, when I told this story to my husband, a while later he said that it's rather common in Europe for people to kiss each other on the cheek. While this isn't exactly true, thanks for correcting me everyone, the fact that when I look out of my window, I see American flags, barbecues, at least five McDonald's in a six mile radius, and a surprising lack of Germans across the border, tells me that this isn't Europe. No, not Europe at all, really. So I think that in this case, that was very unusual. All right, guys, your theories as to why this man kissed this guy on the face in the comments right now. My theory is that there was some soup on his face and mm, love the gay community. That's obviously just the most logical of explanations, but I'll, I'll accept alternate possibilities in the comments, like I said. This story is called Working on My Lunch Break. So this happened a few years ago, and my daughter reminded me about it the other night. Hubs and I were eating a late lunch at a local mom and pop hole in the wall. Honestly, they have the best food ever. I knew the owner as I had worked with her daughter years earlier. Hubs and I frequently went because, seriously, best food ever and was usually under $20 for just the two of us. Anyways, on to the story. Eating a late lunch, probably close to 2.30 p.m., the place closes from 3 to 4.30 on weekdays so they can clean and reset. On this day, they had a late rush and were running around trying to keep everyone happy. I needed a to-go box and was seated in the corner by the waitress' station, I don't know the technical name, where they keep the extra silverware, to-go items, and drinks. Knowing the waitresses were busy, I got up and grabbed a box without thinking about it. The table closest to me asked if I could hand her one too. No problem. Then a gentleman a few tables away asked for more tea. Uh, I look around and wonder if I should. I don't work here. But lucky for me, this place only serves unsweet tea, so sure, no problem. I get his tea and sit back down to box up my leftovers. Hubs is all in the corner on his phone watching a video about whatever game he's playing at the time, so we sat around on our phones while we waited for the ticket. I never noticed the other tables leaving. Owner comes over and slides in the booth next to me and is laughing her ass off. Seems like table number two was so impressed that the other waitress would stop while on their break to help the customers. They had even left me a $5 tip. They were so happy with the customer service that they were sure to come back. I just rolled my eyes and laughed. I did receive the employee discount for lunch that day, and it was probably the cheapest I've ever eaten out. First off, I appreciate this Redditor's patronage of the small local business and claiming they have the best food ever. However, I will have to disagree because there are uh, two places that I can think of that have the best food ever. The first being obviously the Halal Guys. All right, I'm a Halal Guys stan as the kids call it these days. I'm 20 years old, by the way. Okay, you get a massive quantity of food for a very low price of like nine bucks for like an ungodly amount of food that I can eat two of. <laughs> but on a real note, tastes amazing, okay? If you guys have a Halal Guys near you, preferably in Manhattan, you know, the OG, which I've been to before they were huge, okay? I've been a fan most of my life, so. Anyway, if you are blessed enough to have one nearby enough to try, I recommend getting, uh, you know, the platter with the Euro platter or gyro platter was what I call it, with gyro meats and chicken and, uh, you know, slices of naan with extra white sauce and extra red sauce. If you're daring, the red sauce is exceptionally spicy. And I'm not joking, that stuff is really hot and I love spicy food. I actually drank one of the little containers of red sauce when I was a kid because I was that baller. And you know, just mix it all together and it's amazing, it's salty, it's good, it's spicy, and it's like nine bucks for that much food. And also the other place with the best food ever is like Chick-fil-A, obviously. And no, I'm not homophobic or anything, I'm pretty sure they stopped doing that stuff anyways. 
I just really love the best chicken sandwich there is, and Popeyes has nothing on it. The Popeyes chicken sandwich is way too salty. The spicy one doesn't even taste spicy, and both of the sandwiches are absolutely loaded with salt. And I'm not saying that's bad because, you know, nutrition, I'm talking about chicken sandwiches here, but I'm talking flavor, okay? First of all, the chicken itself has that weird salty briny flavor that you get with a lot of fried chicken that is good for a few bites, but it just gets overbearing and I just, it's too much. Like, I get sick of the sandwich before I even finish it. And the mayonnaise, they salt the mayonnaise or something because the mayonnaise is super salty because I got it on the side because I wanted it with my fries. Holy crap, horrible mistake. Horrible mistake. Anyways, moral of the story, Chick-fil-A and Talal guys, best food ever. Sorry. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.